Welcome fellow Kerbal Nauts. This is a special behind the scenes video uh, just to let you know where I'm up to. Uh, special thanks goes to Bob Fitch um, for giving me inspiration of what is going to come um, from the things that I'm doing with KSP. Uh, as you know from my last videos, which was the Kerbos, um, I have a few mods installed. That's not all that I've been doing. Um, the mods installed that I've got are TAC Life Support, TAC Fuel Balancer, uh, Remote TAC. I think that's all of them. Um, but I have uh, part files from um, KSP Interstellar. They've been modded for um, the use that I need them for. And parts from the B9 pack. Um, again, some of them have been modified, some of them haven't. Uh, but not all of the model models have been installed. So, what have I been up to? Well, I've been lobotomizing KSP. As I said, uh, thanks to Bob Fitch for the idea. Um, I wasn't originally going to do it because it's a hell of a lot of work. Um, but I noticed from his videos, I don't know if um, he's noticed, but I noticed when he um, did the um, change from um, his original KSP series to um, the one with the, I think it's the alternate dimension or something like that. Um, I don't think he calls it that, but oh well. I'm sure he'll forgive me. Um, yeah, I noticed when he wiped all the parts, um, KSP itself didn't glitch, as in visual glitches, uh, but also I noticed that things were a lot smoother. So that then gave me an idea and I started looking around in all the parts, etc. And um, I have uh, about four installs of KSP. Uh, one, ha one is the one that I'm using right now. One is uh, KSP Interstellar. One is B9 Pack. And the other one is for general mods and basically crap working. Um, so, when I use the Interstellar and I load in one of my big ships, um, it runs a lot slower than what vanilla KSP does. Obviously it's got extra stuff in there. Um, same goes, well not sort of same goes, uh, the B9 aerospace pack is quite an impressive pack. It adds, it requires a lot more memory. Um, doesn't necessarily run that much slower. Um, I think it was about 5% when I looked into it. So what I decided to do is all the parts that I don't use and all the duplicate stuff and whatnot, I decided to remove them. So let's give an example. If we go into propulsion here, hang on, let's stick a pod down. There we go. Right, you'll notice everything's in completely different order than normal. Uh, all these parts here, you'll know, except that one. Heavy metals tank, again, it's a part that was requisitioned from uh, Interstellar and then re put, re repurposed for the use that I want. And we also have an air tank. Now, from here, this is where things start to change. Um, these were from Tech Life Support, and they are basically the same model, but I have copies of the um, config file 
to repurpose them and make new parts that contain different things. So that one's got wastewater in, that one's got waste, that one's got oxygen, that one's got liquid fuel, monopropellant, oxidizer, food, carbon dioxide. Right. Now, they are all the same model. Right. But there's six, eight, ten parts there. Right. You, it only loads the model once. Right. So I've got ten models that take up the space of one. And on that principle alone, I started cleaning up. Right. Another thing that I did is the atomic rocket motor. This one's the original. Yeah. And I made a bigger one. So that's the original 1.25. I made a 2.5 meter one. Again, same model between the two. Two different config files. Same goes for the rapier engine. That's the original. I accept I didn't stop there. There's a two and a half meter one. And that is a 3.75 meter one, which I think I might have to adjust the uh, uh, rescale factor on them. But I haven't finished uh, debugging all the new parts yet. What else do we have? Monopropellant tanks. You remember these, these ones? That's the original. Same part, you have a 1.25 meter version and a 3.75 meter version. Exactly the same model, three parts. Saves so having all those individual model, models that take up tons of space. Same with the uh, radial tanks. These were, this model was originally the radial RCS tank, which is that one. That's the original. But now I've uh, um, copied the CFG and uh, rewrote it for CO2, which is carbon dioxide, food, liquid fuel, oxidizer, oxygen, that's the RCS one, uh, waste, wastewater, water, and Xeon. Yes, I got rid of the Xeon tanks. And just used one of these. Now, when it comes to the bigger fuel tanks, we've got these. The original parts were. <clears throat> hang on, let me go find it. That one. If we have a look, compact fuel tank designed for small upper stages. That's the Rockamax 16. Uh, so the Rockamax X200-16, which is a two and a half meter part. Yeah, same fuel tank. We now have a 1.25 meter part for liquid fuel only, a two and a half meter part for liquid fuel only, a 3.75 meter part for liquid fuel only. I think you're getting the idea. Right. What I didn't do is put a Xeon tank on these, which I might have to do. And then we've got the Rockamax X232s. Again, same principle. Right. You remember the orange tanks, don't you? Uh, which one is it? LFO. There we go. That's the original orange tank. Well, we now have a mini version of it which is for the 1.25 meter part, and this, come on, wait, uh, that is a 3.75 meter version of the orange tank. Again, that one's got um, liquid fuel and oxidizer in. Ah, 
Uh, and then this one is the Rockamax X208. Okay, repurposed. Uh, the orange tanks, uh, there's only one model that KSP loads, but it loads multiple config files. It takes up a hell of a lot less space. If we look here, Separatron 1 and 2. Separatron 1 is the original. Separatron 2, well, some of you may know from my videos, um, I used a lot of them, so I made one that's twice the size. Same model, two config files. Those are the standard parts that come with KSP. Standard, standard, standard. Um, thermonuclear thrusters. Um, I can't remember what they were in Interstellar, but I've uh, repurposed them. So we have less number of models being loaded, but more parts. The controls. Um, well, you already know from my Kerbos video that I copied the inline advanced stabilizer so that that part is now a 2.5 meter and a 3.75 meter. Now, as I also mentioned, the original advanced SCS module here, uh, the torque is only 20, but what it really should be is 10 times that to 200 for a 2.5 meter part because of the masses involved and the physical size of the ship. So, I created a custom part and uh, set the values up that I saw fit. Uh, RCS books here, they're all from B9. The RCS box original, the quads, that's the original one, as you'll see. That one is not. Same model, two config files. However, this RCS block, which of course called the RV106, actually uses oxidizer and liquid fuel rather than monopropellant. Because it kept chewing through uh, monopropellant. Like you wouldn't believe. But here's where things get really cool. Structural. Really? What the hell's running in the background? Um, ignore that. Oh. Ignore. We already know about the radial decouplers. Yeah, I'll show you. That's the original. And that's the supersized one for 3.75 meter parts. Oh yeah. But, here's where things get cool. You remember the nice, lovely little um, octagonal strut? Well, that's not it. That one's it. That's the original. The one below it is a copy. That one is a copy. And so is that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Four models there. Right, sorry. One model, four config files. But you've noticed something else, haven't you? Modular gear segment. I haven't been drinking, honest. That's the original. That is a slightly bigger 1.25 meter version that I've nicknamed. And that is a 2.5 meter version. It's huge! Oh yeah! Yeah, I make some really big stuff for that. Same goes for the, um, the 1 times version. 
Oops, wrong power bar. And, yep, you've got the adapters as well. That's the original. And we have a 2.5 to 1.25 version. And a 3.75 to 2.5 meter version. They're huge. They're huge. Aerodynamics. Now, let's get rid of this lot. back in a pod. And you see everything in here has moved around. Um, I haven't finished um, editing all of this, but the HW21 wing from B9 has been modified slightly. It's a huge wing, but it's been modified. It can now carry fuel. You'd expect a big wing like that to be able to carry fuel. Starts off with nothing, but it's got 200 of liquid fuel and 200 of half an oxidizer. Now, yes, that means it has more liquid fuel than oxidizer, but then again, you'd probably use more liquid fuel than oxidizer if you were in atmosphere. So, some of these wings, etc., are going to get modified to carry tanks. And why not? Utility. Again, hex cam that comes with uh, tank life support. Right, same principle. I think they are actually the originals that come with it as well. Uh, same here, food containers that come with tank life support. There you go. There's, there's um, um, the tank that you saw well, the model that I was using as tanks, right? I've created a large um, Kerbal Attachment System container. And yes, that means I have modified the um, CAS um, um, config file to include bigger parts that can be placed in containers. But just so you know, I set the capacity as 1200 on that. That's a lot of parts. You already know about the Clampatron docking port. Because I've already mentioned it in a previous video. That's the original. And that's a 3.75 meter version of it. Same model. Just been made bigger. Hey, parts here from uh, KSP and Stella would have been repurposed. I'm only in an area about whether to create a bigger advanced grabbing unit. Huh, not quite so sure. Um, lights from B9. Lights, lights, parachutes, parachutes. Pipe endpoint from Kibble Attachment. Um, I think that's all I've got in here. Plasma refinery. Um, air filters. Yep. Uh, science, well, that mainly just has dishes and whatnot in. So, pretty big changes to KSP. Not finished. It's the wonderful 2080-20 uh, rule, um, where 80% of the work takes 20% of the time, but the last 20% of the work takes 80% of your time. Oh, it's quite finicky. So just to um, show you guys some something interesting. Hopefully I haven't been rabbiting on. Come on! Thank you. I need to check the updates for my uh, graphics card driver. One of the things I've been playing around with is uh, remote tech, because I've not uh, used it before. Um, so, what I have 
done. Yes, it's upside down. Flip it round. We have two satellites in there. For landers. I call them rov sat rovers. Basically these sit and um, are dropped out of here, parachute down and create a link with each other in like a network across the surface of Kerbin. Now if I show you I did have satellites in orbit Unfortunately, right before this video, I updated a load of parts and I'd used them on the satellites, so it deleted all the satellites for me. Which is nice. You love it when it does that. There's KSP, and I've started creating a network of sat rovers. Now, when the orbiting satellites went over, which were not in geostationary orbit, I, they would connect to the network through these as well as KSP, KSC rather. Which meant at any one time, with just this group here, right, at any one time I had two satellites that were in communication range. So it created a nice, wonderful little network. Um, I had satellites going um, over the equator in an equatorial orbit, and I had satellites going in a polar orbit, and it was quite impressive. But, oh well, that'll teach me for using parts they end up replacing. But, as you can see, this one over here was quite annoying, because I dropped it out of the plane, um, parachutes deployed, flipped the right way up, and literally about 40 metres off the ground it lost signal. Mm. I said a few choice colourful words as well. So, might have to delete that one and move it a bit closer, or move it to a bit higher ground. But by the looks of this, these mountains here, seem to be in the right position for creating networks. So like here as well. I'm pretty sure you can create a network up to there. Uh, probably have to use that one, that mountain there to get over to here. And so on and so forth. So you could create an entire network all the way around Kerbin. As you go up to there, to there, uh, there's mountains up here, you might well get it over here, you might have to go up and then down. You've got mountain ranges here, 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 here. If you put them on the top of mountains, which yes, is a pain in the butt to get to one to drop in the right place, and not on a slope that makes it topple over. But If you look, these mountains are all placed um, pretty much the same sort of distances apart. So you could get a remote tech network going without needing satellites. Because we all know, well, those of us that have tried it, uh, getting satellites to stay in a geostationary orbit, a, a perfect geostationary orbit, so that they don't move in relation to the KSC is nigh on impossible. They will move and they will bunch up and they will do all sorts of things. And if you're flying off to like Jewel and, and Duna and whatnot, uh, and your satellites are no longer in an equally spaced orbit, then you're going to lose communication. 
and Sunslaw dictates you lose it at just the wrong point and smash. So, by creating a surface um, network, as well as a uh, satellite network, you can then um, basically don't have to worry about the satellites moving out of position and losing communication. Which is my thought anyway. Um, obviously, what you guys get up to is entirely up to you. But anyway, that's a qu quick overview. I'm not going to give away any spoilers as to what's coming up. Um, but as I said, thanks to Bob Fitch for the ideas, which I'm still coming up with ideas for a storyline. Um, and seeing sort of where things go, but mainly thanks to Bob Fitch for um, making me look at um, the models and parts within KSP. Um, I know I whinged and complained at uh, Squad for releasing 3.75 meter parts, but only a couple of them, um, which also prompted me to basically go in and start making copies of stuff. Um, now, any beginners that are watching this, um, take my warning seriously. Um, while you can't do any harm to your PC, if you start changing the config files, you can get into a lot of trouble and have to restart. Now, by all means, go ahead and learn how to do it. Feel free to ask questions. Um, but be aware that if you delete a part that is in use, you will delete that craft. And any saved crafts that have the part that have been deleted are no longer able to be loaded. So you will not be able to edit them inside KSP. Right, so be aware. Also, I should note that by lobotomizing KSP in this way, it means I cannot update this install of KSP to 0.24 when it comes out. So that will be a fifth install of KSP. Yay. But anyway, um, we didn't crash today. I'm sorry about that. Kind of boring behind the scenes sort of look. Um, not a lot I can do, I'm afraid. Um, just thought people might be interested in what I'm going to be doing. Um, I'm only part way through, but then again, um, I things seem to be even more boring when I make them nice and pretty. So, hopefully, um, you guys will appreciate the uh, the heads up. I'm CW, and for God's sake, stop crashing. Bye for now.